I'm John Sargent and welcome to Argumental, the show where the hottest names in comedy debate the biggest issues facing mankind. Are sea levels really rising? Has devolution been a success? And can I get my Prince Albert done on the NHS? <laughs> Here to argue such burning issues and others like them are our teams. With Marcus Brigstock in the red corner, it's Frankie Boyle. And joining Rufus Hound on the blue team, please welcome Andrew Maxwell. OK, let's kick off with round one, where we discuss a big issue that's had us all sitting in a bath of cold beans. I'm talking about this. Charities, those fundraising, cup-rattling, donkey-saving do-gooders. Blocking our pavements and emptying our pockets, we fill more buckets than a happy hour at KFC. From hungry kids to harpooned whales, they've bagged more millions than a sack banker. But the statement I want the teams to argue over is this. The recession is no time for charity. Up first and supporting the statement, it's Andrew Maxwell. Yeah. Yay! Yeah. Yes! Yeah. Yay! Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I, there's no, it's no time for charity. You know, uh, the best time charity is a load of old crap anyway. You know, Red Nose Day, any of that sort of rubbish. I just get sick of every two years seeing celebrities on the TV holding a very sick baby in Africa, crying on camera, just going, oh, uh, I, 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 I didn't know it was like this. <laughs> didn't you? <laughs> Do you not watch the news? It is, screw the news. Did you not watch it two years ago? <laughs> I'm not necessarily against charity. I'm more against celebrities mixing with charity. If I see Bono or Ricky Gervais or any other multi-millionaire telling me to sort it out one more f***ing time. <laughs> Bono, you're richer than Jesus. <laughs> you sort it out. <laughs> like, simple as that. <laughs> All the same celebrities, like, same with you too, right? If you two was really on Red Nose Day for charity, right, which is a comedy event, yeah, they would have dressed up funny. And they would have done pride in the name of love on a kazoo and a rattle, wouldn't they? <laughs> that would be funny for charity. They did their latest single. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that is in a nutshell. The reason why now is not the time for charity. Vote blue! OK, next up, opposing the statement, it's Marcus Brigstock. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, this is a time for charity, recession or otherwise. The point is, Andrew Maxwell hates charity. <laughs> the recession has nothing to do with this. This is a man who broke into the Cats Protection League and burst a kitten <laughs> during the G20 protests. He picked up a bin, chucked it through the window of Oxfam. <laughs> Stop helping people, you idiots! <laughs> this is the demented face of uncaring Britain, and he's not even British. But he is demented. <laughs> Listen, there are some people who can afford to give money to charity during a recession or otherwise. It is nothing to them. The recession is bollocks. These are the people who go into Waitrose and go, no, darling, there's a recession on. I think we'll have the Tara Marcellata without the smoked salmon in it. Oh, must we? Yes. <laughs> this isn't the world we want to live in, ladies and gentlemen. No, the homeless are having a very hard time during the recession because there are fewer people advertising, therefore the newspapers are thinner, they're cold. <laughs> but the point is, ladies and gentlemen, people like Andrew have no pity. If you could spare just a tiny amount of your pity and your love for this man, we can save him. Ladies and gentlemen, help Andrew by voting for the red team. Thank you. Thank you, Marcus. Thank you, and Rufus. Do you want to join in? Well, isn't the thing that... I mean, I suppose it's that charity is sometimes targeted wrong, isn't it? I mean, the other day, I went and gave some old clothes to Bernardo's. Then a couple of days later, I saw a tramp wearing a rubber thong and a gimp mask. <laughs> is that right? I mean, it's fine to give to charity. I, I think... I mean, this is fine. It's good. No, no, it's but nice it's all thing. right. No, but... it's good. It's good. It's positively good. No, not always. Well... 
hello, I'm collecting for the Gary Glitter babysitting fund. <laughs> Not a registered charity hound. I know you've tried to register it, but... <laughs> I was told he was already registered. <laughs> Not as a charity. <laughs> The reason he's speaking up for this is he knows full well he may at some point be asked to be one of the faces on Comic Relief. And he's desperate that he is seen as being one of the good guys. Yeah. Whereas only yeah. in the dressing room earlier, he said he would happily climb up Kilimanjaro for Comic Relief because you've got great PR and you were still 10,000 miles away from Lenny Henry. <laughs> exactly the kind of fear-mongering, grasping, greedy bullshit that got us into a recession in the first place, ladies and gentlemen. This is self-interest talking. Don't listen to it. <laughs> All right, look, in a nutshell, it gives people uh, that really shouldn't have the opportunity to dress up in a fancy dress costume the chance to dress up in a fancy dress costume, run around, think they're better than the rest of us. Oh, look, I'm doing something for charity. I'm doing something. I'm paying tax. Right? It should be the government that sorts out the problems. If you paid your tax like Bono it should be paying his tax, the world would be a better place anyway. Like and the tax, problems man. that there are many to be sorted now, like the, the thing with the, what's it, comic relief, sub-Saharan Africa, that can only be sorted out by us changing the trade regulations we have between the Western developed world with sub-Saharan Africa. It's not going to be sorted out by that fat ball bag Chris Moyles climbing a mountain. Like, you think things are going to be saved by trade regulations? The only way that Africa can be saved is by me going into my work dressed up as a pirate, OK? <laughs> that is the logical impulse of charity. And just because there's a recession, we can still sit in a bath full of baked beans, it's just that we'll have to feed them to our children afterwards. <laughs> but Andrew's right, ladies and gentlemen. It, you know, it's up to government... You heard him, you heard him. ..to use, our, when we to get use our taxes. But they don't, do they? They use them to bail out rich bankers who divide them up for bonuses. So... If you instead give your money to charity, which you could deduct from your tax bill, it won't go to a banker. During the recession, it will go to someone who actually needs it. OK, thank you all. So, is the recession a time for charity? It's time for our studio audience to decide. Hold up your red cards if you agree with Marcus and Frankie, and the blue ones for Andrew and Rufus. Vote now. So, a clear victory for the red team. Well done, Marcus and Frankie. Right, next up is Slideshow, where I want the teams to illustrate their argument using a series of pictures which they've never seen before. Playing this one will be Rufus and Frankie. Rufus, I'd like you to start us off by arguing that school days are the best days of your life. And here's your first picture, and away you go. Thank you very much, thank you. School days are clearly the happiest days of your life. You don't have bills to pay. Uh, you don't have anything to do other than worry about your social circle and a little bit of light revising. <laughs> Surely one of the best things about these school days were the school dinners that we all used to enjoy. A bit of spotted dick uh, was the name, actually, of Marx's bread fag when he was at Eton. <laughs> Jamie Oliver, like the Messiah, finally came into our lives and told us, feeble-minded few, that maybe it was better that your child had a salad than a turkey twizzler drenched in... evil. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's odd to believe that for years that concept had stumped us. And yet, <laughs> he turned up and bowled us over with his uh, <laughs> debate. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to sound like a broken record, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and, uh, try and... You see, you can't boo that. I have to, in some way, tie this into the pictures. If I go, I don't want to sound like a broken record, you go, mm, no. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Do you think this is easy? I'm trying to make shit up about school with pictures I haven't seen whilst you sit there judging me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and I'd also like to add, vote blue! <laughs> you could be risking the vote here. Um... <laughs> Sorry, sir. Marcus didn't yell at us. Marcus no. didn't yell at you. <laughs> I will, though! <laughs> Don't you let my boy down! <laughs> he may be on the blue team, but has a lot of love! <laughs> OK, come on, chaps. Just uh, disengage. <laughs> School days are the happiest days of your life, ladies and gentlemen, and I can tell you for why. <laughs> ladies, am I right or am I not right 
that there was a time in your life, a slither of a time in your life, where you were genuinely treated as the woman you wished to be. Where blokes were not sexually active enough to genuinely come on too strong, but sexually active just enough to make you feel like the woman you desired. I'm talking, of course, about fingering. <laughs> come on! Am I right? That's how it would start! That's right, school days are the best of your life! Go oh, blue! OK, when we got the furniture back on... OK, settle down, schoolboys. Um, thanks, Rufus. Next up, arguing that school days are not the best days of your life, it's Frankie Boyle. And here's your first picture. Off you go. Yes, school days are not the best days of your life. There's young Frankie Boyle there trying to distract himself with a large pile of pornography. <laughs> School ruined my sex life. Obviously, I can now only come if I make love in a tiny dark room filled with sports equipment. <laughs> so I bumped the school down. Uh, <laughs> what people don't understand about chemistry is that it's a fantastic basis in weapons training, and I took full advantage of that. <laughs> there was not a great deal of possibilities uh, going to school in Glasgow, and eventually I realised that shallot. Frankie, uh, <laughs> school was a school was a, an onion with layers of misery and tedium. But when you peeled them back, there were further layers of misery and tedium. <laughs> I progressed to drugs. I took skunk and uh, <laughs> LSD. I took ecstasy. I was six and a half years old, and what's known in Scotland as a late starter. <laughs> I started to experiment sexually. <laughs> I dress up as a schoolboy, and it wasn't difficult because I was a schoolboy. It was a fantastic, a fantastic time for me, but it wasn't funny. That's the most important thing. It wasn't funny in the slightest. That is why school days are not the best days of your life. <laughs> oh. Thanks, Frankie. Marcus and Andrew, do you want to join in? Well, schools are dismal. Dismal experience. Oh, it's great. I like the release when the last bell goes, you can go home and watch Dog Tanya. Oh. Exactly. Oh. Exactly. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about? No. Exactly. No. When school's finished. As an adult, I happen to know that you watch Dog Tanya every single day, all day. Right. Hey, if you could stop barking for two minutes. <laughs> What it was going on? Frankie, no, I just no, can't. no more dancing, no more singing. Sit down. <laughs> what was going on in Dog Tanyon that they weren't telling us, right? Because they translated Dog Tanyon, and he'd speak for a bit and go, hello, my friend. And then he'd go, aha. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. What were they saying in French? Well, it, no, no, that is how it comes across in French. You just change the accent. Hello, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much. Were you happy at school, Yes, John? I, I was, and now we're going to move on. Don't Thank you very much. dismiss it. <laughs> John Sargent's School Days. There's a book that's crying out to be written. It, 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 it has been written, thank you. I'd quite um, like to read the John Sargent memoirs, because I've got a feeling it would read like this. I did a thing. Four glasses of good red wine later, I did another thing. <laughs> I read a bit, paper, yeah. four glasses of good red wine later, <laughs> I went home. And then... <laughs> But by then, it was time to fight Napoleon. <laughs> every, every, every time you got bored of yourself, you go, right, come on, chaps, let's move on. Yeah, so let's move on. <laughs> uh, thank you. So, are school days the best days of your life? It's time to decide who made the best case. It's blue cards for Rufus and red ones for Frankie. Vote now. A clear victory for the Blues. Well done, Rufus. Join us after the break when we'll be asking whether the general public are idiots. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back to Argumental, the show with more controversial statements than the Pope in a condom factory. <laughs> Our next round is called Head to Head. 
One person starts the debate, but every time I press the buzzer, their opponent takes over to argue the opposite. Marcus and Andrew, you're up for this one, and the topic I'd like you to debate is this. The general public are idiots. And Andrew, <laughs> I'd like you to start us off in favour of the statement. Off you go. The general public are idiots. Everybody knows this. Statistically, it's there. More people vote on X Factor than they do in the general election. People care about stupid stuff like charity. <laughs> you see, this is the problem. No one quite knows who the general public is. Most people don't think of themselves as the general public, and that's why you think the general public are idiots. But that's not true. It's just a gang that you're not in. Look at that fella there. You could easily say, traffic cone in his head, bottle of American beer in his hand, what an idiot. But look at his face. He's having a great night. <laughs> he doesn't care what you think of him. He thinks he's Wizbit. <laughs> he's not an idiot. He is an idiot, although he is also Michael Flatley. <laughs> Listen, individuals get picked out and they're idiots. And then because you don't know them, you lump them in with everybody else. Every winter, there's a bloke who runs onto a lake to get his dog back when it's frozen. He's an idiot. <laughs> Most people would go onto an, a lake to get their dog back. In a sort of general sense, the majority of people are dog getter backer people. <laughs> the general public are not dog getter backer people. <laughs> we are dog getter drowny people. <laughs> that is what the public are, that is what you are. Do not let this man stand here and insult you. He doesn't know you, so to him, you are the public. You're not idiots, you know you're gonna vote red. That's the way everybody's voting these days. Uh, you're not idiots. People, we must unite against the general public. The general public are in its vote blue. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Rufus and Frank, if you want to add something in support you, of your teammates. You can't say you can't say the general public are idiots, because people aren't even the general public. People are individuals. I mean, this guy here, he's an idiot. <laughs> he's an idiot, but he's a bit of a dick. <laughs> Rapist, sex killer. <laughs> Everybody's got their own individual thing, haven't they? In Gloucestershire, they chase after a cheese and hundreds of people get hurt every year, yes. smashing themselves a bit. These they're... are not the general public. Yes, they are! No, they're not! Yes, they are! No, those, they're those... from Gloucestershire! <laughs> when we say the general public are idiots, we're not saying we dislike them. We say we love them for it. If the general public weren't idiots, they wouldn't watch this show. We are the general public! What we're saying we're is you, we're all you. idiots! We are you! They! They spurn you! <laughs> they say, they say they're not idiots. What they're saying is we're better than you. Whereas yeah. we say we are you. <laughs> Every time you've messed up in your life, when you've fallen asleep on that tube and you've woke up in f***ing <laughs> high barnet. <laughs> yes. yes! Yes! Preach! Preach! For you! Yes! Yes! Yeah. Every time we bought that Coldplay album because we were told actually this one's quite good. Yeah! We are you! We're you! Every time you've had a drunken one night stand and then tried to order yourself a taxi from your own house. <laughs> we are you! We are all the general public! We are you! Yeah. You, can't, you can't let these people say, ooh, 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 no! You see, I'm an idiot, I've run out of steam! <laughs> Literally, by this point, the only debate Andrew and I have is this. No! <laughs> no! <laughs> 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 Marcus and Frankie, you've got one moment to reply. I'm not exactly sure how what you were doing there <laughs> differed from what you've been doing all night. <laughs> it hasn't. <laughs> Marcus? It is simply beneath my dignity to get up and patronise you with dances, shouting, pointing, and keep doing shit like this. Uh, frankly, you can have it. It is entirely yours. Have we done any musical barking? No, we haven't. <laughs> OK, so the general public are idiots, or are they? It's red cards for Marcus or blue cards for Andrew. Vote now. <laughs> Yes! 
So, a clear blue majority there. Bad luck to Marcus Brigstock, but well done, Andrew Maxwell. <laughs> Genuinely depressing. Genuinely depressing. Okay. I actually would like to hang myself with hounds' intestines. <laughs> OK, that won't be necessary. We're moving on now. Thank you. <laughs> this next round focuses on another major cultural issue. We live in a society where taboos are breaking down and boundaries seem to shift all the time. There's more openness and freedom than ever before, but some behaviour still defies conventional norms. Please welcome our special guests, Alexander and Vera. <laughs> So, Frankie and Rufus, you're up for this one, and the statement you'll be arguing is this. There's nothing weird about naturism. <laughs> up first, opposing the motion, it's Frankie Boyle. <laughs> if there's nothing wrong with naturism, then how come I'm still banned from Euro Disney? <laughs> People say the world would be a better place if everybody was naked all the time. A better place for who? Rapists. <laughs> I'd like to go about dressed as a Viking in my day-to-day -day life, but I don't do that because I'm aware that that would make me look weird. But who's more likely to get arrested popping out for a pint of milk? Someone dressed as a Viking or someone with their cock out? <laughs> I've done an experiment and it's both. <laughs> But I didn't get put on the Viking Offenders Register. <laughs> saying there's nothing weird about naturism is like saying there's nothing weird about an 80-year-old man's massive, saggy ball bag. <laughs> there are bizarrely formed deep-sea fish with see-through bodies and eyes growing out of their arseholes that are less weird than an 80-year-old man's saggy ball bag. <laughs> the only thing that's weirder is an 80-year-old man's saggy ball bag during a game of badminton. <laughs> but what I have to ask is, why do people have to be naked live in front of me? <laughs> why can't they just take a naked photograph of themselves, put it on the internet, and let me find it in my own good time? <laughs> and trust me, I'll find it. <laughs> Vote for us! Thanks, Frankie. Up next, opposing Frankie and in favour of naturism, it's Rufus Hound. Naturism is not weird, although some human beings, if that is indeed what we can call Frankie Boyle, have sought to paint it as weird. At the beginning of the 20th century, as the Leviathan chimneys belch black, acrid smoke and the exhausts of robotic progress <laughs> darkened our skies, clouding our judgment, some brave young dreamers realised that the industrialisation of our planet divorced us from the simple pleasures of existence. Three quarters of a century later, eminent ecologist James Lovelock developed the Gaia theory, pleading with us to see the world as one living organism. He then revealed that it's about the choices we make as to how we live our lives, the wider significance of this, the only planet the human race can ever truly call home. But do we find ourselves now in communion with nature or instead committing planetary matricide cast into self-imposed orphans? In the Western world, we have sexualised nudity. Nudity is not and should not be seen as intrinsically sexual, rather a way that we can cast off the shackles placed upon us by the industrial age and return to a happier time, a simpler time, a nuder time. <laughs> yes, a time of happier, healthy pursuits. <laughs> like jogging. <laughs> Gymnastics. <laughs> Indeed, yoga. <laughs> if you do that again, I'm phoning the police, OK? <laughs> and I'm glad you mentioned it, Frankie, but yes, what about badminton? <laughs> Marcus, care for a game? Come on now. <laughs> Up your pop. 
Would you mind uh, holding your stick out, sir, so we've got a sort of makeshift net here? Here we go, Marcus, my sir. There we go, lovely. Oh, point to you. Another one. There. Ask yourself this question, ladies and gentlemen. Who looks happier? <laughs> Me or Marcus? <laughs> Marcus doesn't want to take his clothes off. Why? Because he's scared. <laughs> scared of what you'll think, scared of what you'd say, scared of what little there may be to point at. <laughs> You've no possession to be seeing that hound with you. <laughs> you tiny, weathered cock on display. Bring it in. Bring it in. You should ask yourselves this. Is it weird that a human being should be able to enjoy unadorned simplicity of their own body? I, for one, think not. I am not now at my least, rather my most. Not reduced, rather at my most complete. Yes, I stand before you now naked, unhidden, uncamouflaged and unafraid. As pure and true as a human being is able to be. And being so, I ask only this of you. Vote blue. Thank you. Thank you, Rufus, and a big round of applause for Alexander and Vera. How could you have got naked when you know that you have a penis that could draw a crowd to a freak show in Middle Earth? <laughs> I know we are strange bagginses, but look at this penis! <laughs> Frankly, it's what I'm talking about, man. The naked body does not need to be sexualised. It's yeah. not about that. It, it, it may be about that for you, but it doesn't need to be. It's not what naturism's about. It's about so, getting back to something, reclaiming something. Yes. You've got a lot to reclaim. <laughs> Frankie, reclaim your dignity! What about that? How dare you? I'm sat here in a tie. <laughs> but it's not sexual. It doesn't need to be sexual. It doesn't have to be sexual. It can just be German. <laughs> Well, it certainly put me off sex for quite a yes. while. <laughs> Doesn't bother me. No, fair enough. But the argument was about whether or not it's weird, and I've seen things tonight... <laughs> You're watching Dave, the home of witty banter. Next, we have a bunch of comedians to make us laugh in Mock the Week. <laughs> OK, that's it. Thanks very much. So, there's nothing weird about naturism, or is there? It's up to our studio audience to decide. Red for Frankie and blue for Rufus. Vote now. You notice how more of the people who couldn't see your cock are voting for you. <laughs> so, I can tell you that the blue team have won the round, which means this week's winners are the blue team. Rufus, put some clothes on. Well done, Rufus Hound and Andrew Maxwell. Commiserations to Marcus Brigstock and Frankie Boyle. That's all we've got time for. Good night.